What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Shark Bites. Today I've decided to do a video that I've been meaning to do for ages now and a few of you watching at home actually suggested it to me. Shark misconceptions and myths are all over the place. You see them on the internet, you see them in shark movies and you can often hear them on a Friday night down the pub from that drunken bloke sat in his own in the corner. And the problem is that these myths have been said so many times that often many people now just simply believe them to be fact. Here on Shark Bites I've tried to dispel a few of these myths on the channel before in previous previous videos and you might have seen me occasionally dispelling some of them in the movie commentaries. But today I'm going to dispel five of what I believe to be the most common misconceptions about sharks out there. And then you can take this information that I give you and impress all your friends. Win-win, right? Before we start though, if you're watching this right now, then why not take two seconds to click that little thumbs up button below the video. It makes a massive difference to the channel and it's really, really appreciated by me. Right, okay, let's get stuck in and dispel some myths. Up first, we've got sharks are afraid of dolphins. This one is an absolute classic and it probably stems from surf culture and films. Surfers have said in the past when you're around dolphins that you're safe from sharks, which just simply isn't true. You also might remember the scene from that old movie Flipper where Flipper saves the kid from the big old hammerhead shark by ramming it in the gills. So maybe it's originated partially from here. Now, don't get me wrong. Dolphins will definitely defend themselves from sharks when they feel like they have to. There are probably tons of occasions where dolphin pods have attacked a shark to try and protect the pod or maybe some of the younger individuals within that pod. And in these instances, the shark will definitely head off to make sure that it doesn't get injured. However, these are two animals that share very similar habitats and so will often be found in very close proximity to each other. They also even feed on similar prey species as each other. So where there's prey, you'll often find dolphins dolphins and sharks together. But for the most part, they keep themselves to themselves. So if you're ever out in the water and you see dolphins, don't presume that there aren't any sharks around. I'd actually say it's probably more likely to be the opposite. When there are dolphins around, there's probably going to be a shark purely because they're in the same area to feed on the same prey. Next up, we've got sharks have small brains and therefore aren't intelligent. So for some reason, lots of people believe that because sharks have smallish brains, that they're not very clever. And this is just not the case. Shark brains aren't like your stereotypical human brain. They're almost Y-shaped. And although most are these Y-shaped, there's a wide variety in their appearance across shark species. Have a look at the different designs here featuring scalloped hammerheads, tiger sharks, and spiny dogfish. It's also been discovered that shark species that aren't required to actively hunt for their prey, i.e. filter feeders and bottom feeders, actually have smaller brains than shark species that do have to hunt for prey, like great whites. So brain size does vary between shark species, but in general, sharks have a brain to body weight ratio that is actually pretty high for fish. Some have said that it's even comparable to that of birds and mammals. For example, we know that the manta ray has a brain that can weigh up to 200 grams, and it actually has the largest brain to body weight ratio of any living fish. Research has also shown that sharks are highly social animals and form social groups where they can learn from each other. And this is without doubt a demonstration of intelligence. Sharks can even communicate with each other through body signals, such as arching their back or lowering their pectoral fins or even opening their mouths like you can see in this picture here. Ooh. So even though a shark's brain might not be particularly big, you don't survive as a top predator on this planet for millions and millions of years without having some level of intelligence. And realistically, how do you even define intelligence anyway? Oh god, don't get me down that rabbit hole. We'll be here for hours. <laughs> Right, next up, we've got sharks can't get cancer. For some reason, this belief has persisted for years and years, and I'd actually say it's probably the most common misconception about sharks out there. So sharks definitely can and do get cancer. I'm pretty sure the misconception was partly promoted, at least, by those who sell shark cartilage and claim that it can cure cancer in humans. Whereas, in fact, there is no scientific evidence whatsoever that this is true, and it was probably invented by those selling shark products to try and boost the market for those products around the world. In total, scientists have documented cancerous tumors in at least 23 shark species, including great whites, blue sharks, and bronze whalers. The first report of a tumor on a shark was actually documented in 1908, so we've known that sharks can get cancer for over 110 years. We don't really know what causes tumors in sharks, although studies have suggested that industrial pollutants and human activities have the potential to cause tumor growth. So sharks do get cancer, although we have to say it is pretty rare, but 
Why is it rare? Well, there's a few different thoughts out there. One of them is that sharks don't have bones like humans do, they have cartilage. In humans, our bones serve as the factory for immune cells, although it does take some time for those immune cells to mature before they're released into the bloodstream. In sharks, their immune cells, which are more primitive than ours, are actually created in the thymus and the spleen. Here, they're released immediately into the bloodstream where they mature as they circulate around. So this might mean that they can react faster to smaller, newly formed tumors. Pretty cool, right? Okay, coming in at number four, we've got sharks can't stop swimming, otherwise they'll die. So this is one that I hear all the time, and it's somewhat true, but only for certain shark species. There are some shark species that do have to continually move forwards in order to breathe, and these sharks are known as obligate ram ventilator sharks. Examples of obligate ram ventilators include great whites, mako sharks, and whale sharks. Although saying that, I have actually seen whale sharks perform an almost hover-like stationary motion in the water, but as long as they've got their mouths open, they can still draw water across the gills, and that means they can still breathe. The other form of breathing in sharks is known as buccal pumping, and this is where they draw water in either through the mouth or the spiracles, and then it's passed over the gills so they can breathe. This allows some species of shark to remain completely motionless on the sea floor, but can still breathe at the same time, like we often see in nurse sharks. The vast majority of shark species, though, use a combination of ram ventilation and buccal pumping, and it's only a few species of shark that are actually obligate ram ventilators. Another one I hear a lot is that you shouldn't pull a shark backwards by its tail, otherwise it's gonna drown. This almost makes sense because yes, if you were to drag a shark through the water backwards, then that water wouldn't be passing the gills properly so it couldn't breathe. But the most common case when you might see someone dragging a shark backwards by its tail is when it's stranded and that person is trying to get it back into the water. In this case, the shark is already out of the water suffocating anyway, so dragging it backwards by its tail into the water isn't gonna kill it it being out of the water entirely is gonna kill it. Although in those situations, I'd always seek to contact your nearest marine strandings organization for the best advice. And finally, at number five, we've got sharks don't have predators. So this one's a pretty strange one, but I have heard it once or twice, but sharks definitely do have predators. Firstly, sharks are often predators of other shark species, and this happens in the shark world all the time. If you're a bigger shark, you're definitely going to be eating a smaller shark if you get the opportunity. I think this misconception stems from the idea that sharks are right at the top of the food chain, and Although it's true in some cases for sharks, there's still one animal that's even higher. Killer whales will often kill and eat great white sharks, and this has been documented a number of times. It's thought that killer whales really enjoy the fatty livers of great white sharks and that they're incredibly nutritious. Sperm whales are another animal that have been documented to contain shark remains in their stomachs. But it's not just cetaceans that eat sharks, it's other marine mammals as well. Back in 2012, a Cape fur seal was actually photographed attacking and eating a number of blue sharks off Cape Town. It reportedly attacked and killed five out of the 10 blue sharks that were in the area at the time, much to the shock of all the divers. Then recently, as in the last three or four months, it's been reported that leopard seals were found to be eating ghost sharks and spiny dogfish. So there are most definitely a few natural predators of sharks around the world. Then if you throw humans into the mix, we can potentially classify as a predator for sharks, although perhaps not really a natural predator. Humans kill tens, if not hundreds of millions of sharks every year through a variety of fishing practices. So while sharks might be a pretty awesome and revered predator, there are a few things out there that will hunt and kill them. And there we go, guys. There's five common misconceptions about sharks dispelled for you by a shark scientist. Did you previously believe in any of those misconceptions or do you have any other shark myths that I haven't mentioned here today? If so, I wanna hear all about them in the comments. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to the Shark Bite channel below where you can stay up to date with all of our latest videos. Until then, see you next time.